The Austrian School Hey everyone, welcome back to Economics YouTube channel. Today, we will show you the methodology of the Austrian School. Before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to our channel, and if not, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so that you never miss out on more videos like this. Here we begin. The Austrian School is a heterodox school of economic thought adapted to methodological individualism. The concept that social phenomena result exclusively from the actions and motivations of individuals. The school originated in the late 19th and early 20th century Vienna with Eugen von von Bewerk, Karl Menger, Friedrich von Weiser, and more. It was methodologically opposed to the younger historical school in the dispute known as Methodenstreit, or Methodology Struggle. The current day economists working in this tradition are located in distinct countries, but their work is referred to as Austrian economics. Among the theoretical contributions of the early years of the Austrian school are the subjective theory of value, marginalism in price theory, and the formulation of the economic calculation problem, each of which has become the accepted part of mainstream economics. Since the mid-20th century, the mainstream economists have been critical of the modern-day Austrian school and consider its rejection of econometrics, macroeconomic analysis, and mathematical modeling outside the heterodox or mainstream economics. After Friedrich Hayek won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 1974, the Austrian school reawakened interest in the 1970s. Members of the German Historical School of Economics argued against the Austrians during the late 19th century Methodenstreit, methodology fight. The Austrians advocated the role of theory in economics instead of the study or compilation of historical circumstances. Menger challenged the historical school's techniques in his 1883 book, Investigations into the Method of the Social Sciences, with special reference to economics. A leader of the historical school, Gustav von Schmoller, responded with a negative assessment, coining the label Austrian School to describe the school as an outsider and provincial. The designation stuck around and was embraced by the followers. When it comes to methodology, the Austrian school believes that all economic phenomena are caused by individual subjective choices, such as personal knowledge, time, expectation, and other emotional elements. Thus, Austrians' methodological individualism is used to better understand the economy by looking at the social consequences of human choice. Different schools of economic theory, on the other hand, have focused on aggregate variables, equilibrium analysis, and societal groups rather than individuals. Economists with a methodological ancestry to the early Austrian school produced a wide range of techniques into theoretical orientations in the 20th and 21st centuries. Ludwig von Mises, for example, organized his version of the subjectivist approach, which he called Praxeology, in a book called Human Action, which was translated into English in 1949. In it, Mises claimed that Praxeology could be used to derive a priori theoretical economic truths, and that deductive economic thought experiments could produce results that were inextricably linked to the assumptions. He argued against the use of probabilities in economic models, claiming that conclusions could not be drawn from empirical observation or statistical analysis. Some Austrian intellectuals have embraced Mises' praxeological approach since his time. Various Austrians utilized models and mathematics in their analyses throughout the 20th century. Stephen Horwitz, an Austrian economist, said in 2000 that Austrian methodology is compatible with macroeconomics and that Austrian macroeconomics may be defined in terms of microeconomic foundations. According to Austrian economist Roger Garrison, Austrian macroeconomic theory may be accurately stated using diagrammatic models. In 1944, Austrian economist Oskar Morgenstern published a theory of games and economic behavior, which included a thorough schematization of an ordinal utility function, the von Neumann Morgenstern Utility Theorem. Individualism as a method to understand economic phenomena, we must return to individual actions or inactions, 
Groupings or collectives cannot operate unless individual members act. People, not groups, are the ones who think. Methodological subjectivism. To explain economic phenomena, we must return to individual judgments and choices based on whatever knowledge they have or believe they have, as well as whatever expectations they have about external developments, particularly the perceived consequences of their intended actions. Tastes and preferences. Subjective appraisals of goods and services determine their demand, and current and potential consumers influence their prices. Producers and other economic players assess opportunity costs to represent the alternative options that must be foregone. When productive services are used for one purpose, all other uses must be forfeited. Marginalism In all economic designs, the significance of the last unit added to or withdrawn from the whole determines the values, costs, revenues, productivity, and so on. Production and consumption have a temporal structure. Decisions to save reflect time preferences for consumption in the near, distant, or indefinite future, and investments are made to anticipate higher outputs projected if more time-consuming production procedures are undertaken. He added two further tenets from the Mises School of Austrian Economics. Consumer Sovereignty Consumers influence on effective demand for goods and services, and through the prices that result in free competitive markets on producers' and investors' production plans, is not only a hard fact, but also an important goal that can only be achieved by altogether avoiding government intervention in markets and restrictions on the freedom to sell. Political Individualism Individuals will only achieve political and moral freedom if they are allowed to complete economic independence. Economic restrictions gradually lead to the spread of the state's coercive action in the political realm, eroding and eventually eliminating the essential individual liberties that capitalistic societies could achieve in the 19th century. What are the Austrian school's contributions to economic thought? The first is the cost of opportunity. Friedrich von Weiser, an Austrian economist, was the first to express the opportunity cost hypothesis in the late 1800s openly. The cost of any activity measured in terms of the best option foregone is known as opportunity cost that is not chosen. The sacrifice is associated with the second best alternative available to someone or a group of people who have selected many mutually exclusive options. The concept of opportunity cost is essential in mainstream economics because it expresses the fundamental link between scarcity and choice. The concept of opportunity cost is critical in ensuring that resources are utilized effectively. Then there's capital and interest to consider. Eugen Bohm von Bewerk first formulated the Austrian theory of money and interest. He claims that two things govern interest rates and profits, supply and demand in the final goods market and time preference. Capital intensity and the degree of roundaboutness of production processes are equated in Bohm theory. Bewerk's The Law of Marginal Utility, according to Bohm Bewerk, entails the classical rule of costs. As a result, some Austrian economists dismiss the idea that liquidity preferences influence interest rates. Inflation is the third factor. Inflation, according to Mises, is an increase in the supply of money. In the theoretical investigation, the term inflation has only one rational meaning, an increase in the quantity of money, in the broadest sense of the term, to include fiduciary media as well that is not offset by corresponding increase in the need for money, again in the broadest sense of the term, resulting in a fall in the objective exchange value of money. Inflationary stimulation, according to Hayek, takes advantage of the time lag between a rise in the money supply and an increase in the price of goods and services. And because any inflation, no matter how small at the start, may benefit employment only if it accelerates, any inflation used to reduce employment will only do so for as long as it accelerates. Stable, mild inflation will not assist. It will only lead to outright inflation. Inflation at a constant rate quickly loses its stimulative influence. The decisive argument against moderate inflation, which is portrayed as good even in traditional economic textbooks, is that it just leaves us with a backlog of delayed adaptations. The fourth issue is the challenge of economic calculation. 
The economic calculation problem relates to Max Weber's critique of planned economies, which he originally started in 1920. Mises later explored Weber's concept with his pupil, Friedrich Hayek, who expanded on it in several writings, including The Road to Serfdom. The calculation problem asserts that without price signals, the factors of production will never be distributed most efficiently, rendering socialism untenable. So this is entirely about the methodology of the Austrian school. Let us know your reviews in the comments below. Until the next, stay tuned and subscribe for more.